the latest version of Android packs in many small but important additions, all of which make the OS more polished and mature than ever. Some Android releases represent massive sea changes for Google's OS, overhauling technical underpinnings or introducing new design elements. Others are content to tighten up the screws and add polish to an already well-established platform. The new release of Android for 2017-2018, version 8.0 Oreo, fits somewhere in between those two extremes. Android itself is pretty stable at this point, so it's natural that broad, sweeping UX and functionality changes are less likely to happen with every new version. Yet although Oreo looks and feels a lot like the previous Android Nougat, contained within our myriad feature tweaks and low-level tune-ups that make Android more mature and powerful. With Oreo, your phone will be able to view videos in the foreground as you use other apps in the background. It'll become easier to keep track of multiple notifications from the same app, thanks to the new notification channels and notification dots features. Smarter text entry and autofill APIs will take the tedium out of entering passwords and other sensitive info. And Google's Project Treble should help phone shipping on Oreo get faster updates to Android P and beyond. In that video, you are going to discover a first review of Android 8.0 Oreo. Most of us see Android through the lens of whichever manufacturer's user interface we choose. This long-standing trend isn't going to change in Oreo. And so bear in mind that when you get 8.0 on, for example, your Galaxy S8, it'll look a bit different to what we're reviewing here on Google's Pixel devices. Nevertheless, more manufacturers than ever, Motorola, Lenovo, OnePlus and HTC, to name a few, are using a near-stock Android UI right now. So in that context, the design direction of vanilla Android continues to matter. There's been no major visual overhaul in the new version of Android. In fact, the most striking visual difference is the brighter color palette for the quick settings area in the notification shade. It's now light gray, not dark gray, reflecting similar color changes in the stock settings app. For the non-phone nerds among us who own pixels, these might well be the only visual change they notice. The redesigned settings app is the next most significant visual change. The slide-out hamburger navigation panel added in Nougat has been removed, and instead Google has made navigation easier by redesigning each of the 13 submenus. Many of the major settings options are accompanied by icons, and Android now does a better job of surfacing important items within each submenu. The new battery settings page is a great example of this. Screen usage screen on time, is shown right up top, along with a time since your last full charge. Scroll down a little, and your most battery-hungry apps are displayed. You need to look below the surface to spot many of the other visual changes in Android 8.0. For instance, Google has finally started bringing a sense of order to app icons, with the new adaptive icons feature. Just as Google pushed towards circular app icons in Android 7.1, Adaptive icons lets phone makers change this cutout shape to what best fits their own visual style. On the pixels, you can choose between five cutout types. This means manufacturers like Samsung, Huawei and LG, who like to use their own icon cutout shape, have a more reliable way to do this that doesn't result in bad, weird-looking icons for third-party apps. The new icon style should also bring some uniformity to Android app drawers and home screens, which for a long time have been a jumble of mismatched shapes. Android's animations haven't changed a whole lot in Oreo, but there are a couple of sprightly new animation behaviors in the notification shade that add to the polish of Google's material design. Icons smoothly transition from the status bar into their notification cards, then into the overflow area if you have lots of notifications. And icons also juggle themselves around the status bar places as new alerts arrive, making the whole system feel more dynamic. Finally, it's worth mentioning a handful of upgrades to that most important of smartphone features, Emoji. Android 8.0 adds a handful of new emoji in Emoji 5.0, while redesigning the graphics themselves in a move away from the old-style blobs. Going forward, 
Google's Emoji Compatibility Library will allow developers to support new emoji on older Android versions, all the way back to 4.4 KitKat. Meanwhile, behind-the-scenes font changes in Oreo allow developers to customize the way emoji look in their specific apps, while making it easier for devs to use custom fonts in their apps. Thanks to fonts becoming a full resource type in Android 8.0. Arguably, the emoji compatibility features in Google Play services is the more significant changes here. Nevertheless, system-level support for new icons, and more consistent-looking emoji, are also a big deal. It's easy to shrug off the importance of emoji, but they're an important part of communication for millions of people, and Google is doing the right thing by focusing engineering effort on them, both in Android and Play services. Android notifications were overhauled in Nougat, and Oreo brings a handful of smaller changes to make handling the daily fire hose of alerts a little easier. The big new thing is notification channels, a new feature which brings categories of notifications to apps, making it easier to manage and filter different types of alerts from the same app. A social app, for example, might have channels for direct messages, status updates, likes or other interactions. And you can then choose how you're alerted for notifications in each of these channels, sound, vibration, or LED, or even block notifications from some channels altogether. Long pressing on a notification lets you see and configure its notification channels, just as in older versions of Android, you could choose to allow or block notifications. The changes to Android's notification setup are small but numerous and they aren't confined to the notification sheet itself. Ambient Display, first introduced way back on the Nexus 6, has seen its biggest overhaul thus far in Android 8.0. The main ambient display area actually shows you less information than it did in Nougat, with only the time and a series of icons appearing when the phone is raised. The other side of that coin is that individual notifications now flash up in a more user-friendly way. Notification pop-ups on the ambient display are larger and easier to read, and if you have the option enabled, a double tap is all it takes to open up the main lock screen. Balancing information density and glanceability is always tricky, but Google manages a reasonable blend of both in Oreo. And last but not least, in addition to the notification shade, lock screen and always on display, Android 8.0 allows launchers to show you individual app notifications through the Notification Badges feature. Apps with a pending notification will display a colored dot, and long pressing to open up the shortcut menu will show notifications alongside app shortcuts, complete with the ability to swipe to dismiss. Picture-in-picture -picture mode was actually introduced in Android 7.0, but only for Android TV devices. Version 8.0 brings it to phones and tablets, introducing a potentially huge feature for owners of extra-large tablet-class devices. Picture-in-picture -picture mode varies a little depending on how the developer implements it, but basically this feature lets you start a video from within one app, then hit the home key to shrink it down into a smaller floating window with its own playback controls. You can resize and move it around the screen in the foreground, while opening and using other apps as normal in the background. It's similar to multi-window, introduced as standard in Nougat. And while you can use multi-window to split the screen between video and other apps, picture-in-picture -picture is a much more elegant approach. Like many Android 8.0 features, we're going to have to wait for a developer to update their apps to take advantage of picture-in-picture. Everyone hates entering passwords, the tedium of password entry has spawned an entire industry of password managers. But these still require a lot of frustrating copying and pasting. So in Oreo, Google has tackled the password pain point on two fronts. Firstly, Autofill with Google can help you sign into accounts on your phone using information already stored in your Google account, all with a single tap. For instance, if you've signed into Twitter on the web through Chrome, Google can then use these saved credentials to help you sign into the Twitter app on your phone. Android Oreo is simply the beginning of the end for password entry on phones. Despite the more abundant state of the Android tablet market, Oreo provides clues that Google still intends to push into the convertible space, either through Android as we currently know it, 
Chrome OS running Android apps, or something else entirely. Android 8.0 brings new life to the soon-to-be-retired, yet still criminally overpriced, Pixel C tablet. On top of the new multitasking interface introduced for tablets in version 7.1.2, Android 8.0 adds a new system for keyboard shortcuts within Android apps, making it quicker to get around apps and menus where it's not convenient to touch the screen. That's particularly useful considering that a vast majority of a large tablet's life is spent attached to a keyboard. Out-of-control apps running in the background have long been the number one reason for poor battery life on Android phones. And now, building on the project Doze and Doze on the Go enhancements in Android 6.0 and 7.0, version 8.0 makes it harder for badly behaving apps to run roughshod over your device's battery. In Oreo, Google has introduced even more limits on what apps can do while they're not in the foreground. Broadcast limitations in the new version mean that, with a few exceptions, apps in the background can't react to broadcasts, things happening on the device, that don't specifically target them. Google is using these restrictions to nudge developers towards Android's job scheduler feature. Introduced in Lollipop, which manages background tasks in a way that's easier on your battery. As the owner of a device on Android 8.0, you don't need to do anything to take advantage of the battery life, and performance, benefits of tighter background controls. Oreo makes it harder for misbehaving apps to devour your battery. It's going to take years, not months to judge the success, or otherwise, of Google's new project Treble. It's hard to get excited about any single feature in Android 8.0 Oreo, even for smartphone nerds like us. That's very much a product of where we are in the OS's lifespan right now, but it also speaks to the fact that Google is using this release to target specific areas, notifications, autofill, picture-in-picture, background battery life, project treble, as opposed to doing any major work on the user-facing side of Android. As a result, Oreo is the sum of many smaller changes that make the OS easier to use, with better performance fewer pain points and added convenience. Android still feels like Android, but in 8.0 it's more polished than ever. An evolution rather than a revolution. Which new features of Android 8.0 Oreo do you expect the most? Let us know in comments. To discover more Android-related content, don't hesitate to subscribe to the S Sorrels channel.